Fly ball onto the track. At the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. And gone. What a game. What a moment. What is up, my friends? Happy Wednesday, everybody, which is different than normal, Alex, because today we are doing This Week in Otani News, which is much different than what we normally do, which is Tuesday. Yeah, I, that just like took me a second there as you were like, what day is it? Where are we? Who are you? Exactly. Okay, because this week we had so the MLB trade deadline, which was absolutely nuts. It always is. It has come. It is gone. Shohei is on the Angels and he is on the Angels for the rest of the season. But we will talk about that. In my favorite segment of all time, this week in Shohei Otani news, we're going to talk about him staying on the Angels. We're actually going to talk about his chances of staying on the Angels long term. We're going to talk about them in the middle of a playoff push, his chances of winning the triple crown this year, his pitching on the mound, his historic day pitching and hitting recently. There was a lot. This week, and Alex, we have a lot to discuss on this Wednesday and this week in Shohei Otani news. We do, and and it's crazy without Shohei Otani actually being moved that he was probably the biggest kind of discussion or player's name that was brought up within the trade deadline conversations two weeks leading up to the trade deadline, and then ultimately the Angels, a little over a week ago, taking him off the trade deadline and immediately being buyers. So that's that's the biggest news is Shohei Otani is staying in Anaheim at least for the remainder of this season. Well, yeah, that was the biggest conversation of, of the trade deadline is n nothing could happen until we figured out what was happening with Shohei Otani. Is he available? Is he not available? And, you know, a, a few days ago, the Angels came out and said, you know what? He's not available saying to the entire world, we are going to be buyers. Mm -hmm. And buyers they became. The Angels really went for it at the trade deadline, added a lot of good arms, added Ronaldo Lopez, Lucas Giolito, CJ Crone, Randall Grichuk, who hit a homer in his first game with the Angels. So not only is Shohei staying, but respect where respect is due, Alex. The Angels decided to go all in, and they are going all in for one final last hoorah if you will yeah with Shohei they got they got two more months two months to prove they can get into the playoffs with him and hopefully potentially re-sign him going forward but the big news this week is that the trade deadline came and gone Shohei was the biggest name mentioned for a long time but he is ultimately staying and the Angels they're going for it. It, it. There's been a shift really since they got back from the all-star break. They really started winning games. They're seven and three in their, their last 10 games. And ever since they kind of made that decision to keep Shohei Otani and really go for it, it, there is a slightly different feel to this team. And they don't even have Mike Trout back yet, which is going to be another huge addition once he gets back, hopefully within a couple of weeks after having that hand injury. This is do or die. This is the most important stretch in <laughs> Angels history oh, since yeah. winning the World Series in 2002. Because if you can make a push, if there is any possibility that you can, I mean, you have Houston and the Rangers in your division who are both playing great. Um, if you can get in in a wild card spot and make a push for the postseason. Now, you've said this before. We've heard Ken Rosenthal say it before that you guys were unsure that Shohei Otani would actually re-sign with the Angels once he's a free agent next season. What are the chances now that you think that Shohei would re-sign with the Angels next year? You know, Alex, this was not that long ago, and that was putting it rather mildly. From Ken, pretty much said, Blunt, "No way." He ain't there. Yeah. Shohei, he's, I'll never say it's a hundred percent, but he's not re-signing there. And, you know, I've done a lot of thinking about this and done a lot of listening to what comes out and what is said. And I do believe now that there is much more of a chance than I would have said a couple months ago. And I'm not saying it's a high chance. I'm yeah. not. I, I just think there is more of a chance now that it does happen for a few different reasons. One I think this is pretty telling to Shohei that they are all in mm -hmm. right now. And really not I think that. He came out and said that. Said, in my six years here, 
This is the first time we've been buyers, and that is really cool and something that I am really excited about. And also spoke about how much he loves the Angels and loves Anaheim and loves the fan base. Um, so I would say there's definitely a shot. Now, this was interesting. Odd Shark tweeted this out. The LA Angels have been buyers at the deadline, committed to making the playoffs. Their odds to make the playoffs are yes plus 450. So not great odds. No is minus 650. So is there a chance? Yes. And I do believe. For the Angels to have a chance to re-sign Shohei, they got to get in. I yeah. really, they have to get in. So if I, to to clear to go in a little deeper on does he re-sign there, I think it's important to have that conversation. If you're Shohei, to walk into that front office, similar to at the trade deadline, if if you haven't been keeping up, the Mets had a fire sale and Max Scherzer basically went into the front office and said, Hey, what's the plan Yeah, for next year yeah. and the year after exactly. like, give me the blueprint. What, what is the plan at? for next year? I think Shohei should do something like that. Yeah. Cause a lot of these guys, a lot of these players aren't under control for a long time. You know, this is kind of this moment is all in for the here and now. Yeah. So I think you walk into that the day the season ends, walk into the front office and say, What's the plan before I get out of here for the off season and we lose communicate, you know, everything yeah. starts happening. What's the plan? Are you all in for next year? What is your, who are you going to bring in? Who are we going to pay? What can we do? How are you going to improve the pitching? I think there's a lot of what ifs, but I will say, I think the chances of Shohei re-signing with the angels are greater than what they were a couple of months ago. I think it also helps uh, that another possible suitor far suitor, but it could have been the Mets just because Steve Cohen has so much money and he's familiar with Billy Epler, the GM who got him to the Angels is the GM for the Mets, had a yard sale and sold everybody and aren't going to be in that winning competition till what, 2026 is what they said? Yeah, they, Max yeah. Scherzer was told we are, we are shooting for 2025, 2026, 2025 at the earliest most likely 2026. And you're absolutely right. Because I, when we, a couple weeks ago did the top destinations for Shohei, for me, the Mets were the, the Mets were the only East coast top team. three East yeah. coast team, because I, I do believe he wants to be on the West coast, but mm -hmm. what, what difference do they have? Steve Cohen's pockets. Yeah. And they were ready to win, yeah. but I, they're, they're not right now. And they've said 2024 is going to be almost like a, a repurposing year. Yeah. Meaning to me, Shohei ain't going there. No, I mean, your brother just left there, and now he is back in Houston, which is crazy because that happened live while you were in an interview right before the trade deadline, and run it back, Astros. Alex, run it back. The whole day of the trade deadline felt like it was like three days all pushed into one. I woke up early because, well, you know, we, we disagree here. I actually think wherever you grow up is the time zone that you fall in love with forever. Yeah. But, you know, I'm an East Coast guy. I love East Coast time. Now that I'm on the West Coast, if I want to be, if you want to, if you, you don't want to miss anything, yeah. I had to wake up at six o'clock because nine o'clock Eastern. Just imagine is a that world. your normal wake up time is 9 a.m.? I normally wake up probably between 8.30 and 9. That's a very, that's a very athlete wake up Can you imagine you. a world, Alex, in which it was eight o'clock and I'm just snoozing away and Bob Nightingale <laughs> tweets Justin Verlander to the Astros and I wake up with a million messages and, and I've just completely missed, missed everything. I missed my emergency podcast that we had to do and that we did end up doing. But yeah, Justin is back with the Houston Astros and what a weird what a weird way that it's all come about, to I mean, be but honest. What a you. win for the Astros. They yeah. basically got him back. Mets are still paying his contract. And this was insane. This was an insane get for the Astros. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I know he's excited. And, uh, you know, the, the year has played out in a way that nobody could have possibly imagined, as we were no. just talking about with the Mets, how it's a full fire sale. Nobody saw that coming, but it has. And, you know, I, I, Justin wanted to win there. And unfortunately, things happened that that wasn't going to be the case anymore. So if you're going to go anywhere, Go somewhere you're comfortable and yeah. you know is going to win. And there were some options. There's a lot of winners out there right now, and there were a lot of suitors for Justin. Uh, but 
He's super comfortable in Houston, and that's where he's heading back. It's shades of 2017 all over again. It was, is it going to be Houston? Is it going to be the Dodgers? Where is yeah. he going to go? It really does. It feels exactly like that. So a uh, crazy last 24 hours. Well, speaking of winning, the Angels are really making that playoff push, and Shohei Otani is a huge piece of that. This last week, he pitched his first ever complete game shutout in a back-to-back -back day and then goes on and hits a couple homers. I... Well, I was going to say I've never seen a day like he had because there has never been a day yeah. like he had where he threw a complete game one hitter, his first ever, first ever complete game in Major League Baseball, his first ever complete game shutout in Major League Baseball, and it was all done while giving up only one hit. Now, what was the unique part of this and what has never been done in the history of baseball before is it was a doubleheader, mm -hmm. and he did that in the first game of the doubleheader, and a lot of people myself included had the thought you know he plays all the time but if ever there were a time and an opportunity for Shohei to not play in a game it's the second game of a double header that's starting an hour after the first game in which you just threw 111 pitches and a complete game one hitter nope but no 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 he goes out there and in that game hits two homers making it the first person. He's the first player in the history of baseball to throw a complete game shutout in game one of a doubleheader and hit a homer in game two of the doubleheader. Uh, I, yeah, never seen anything like it. Greatest player I've ever seen. Greatest player the game has ever seen. And as you mentioned, the Angels. Yeah. They're on a roll. 11 of their last 15, sitting just out of a wild card spot, yeah. three games out, uh, a complete re- shift of Re the mindset reshift everything? of the mindset reshift of the roster yeah uh we saw reynaldo lopez the new addition come in the other day in relief was throwing 101 miles an hour nasty stuff uh randall gritchick already making a big impact they're going for it they are and they're playing good baseball and it i'd love to see it i would love to see trout and shohei in the playoffs yeah i'm excited to see mike trout get back and see the added boost that that gives and 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 give Otani some protection too for the love of God he needs protection yes he because, does because well as of right now you watch a game yeah he's getting walked we saw a game where he has walked four times we saw a game where he is intentionally walked almost every time we're mm -hmm. seeing we're seeing intentional walks every game at this point and what's interesting about this is every time they've been on a road trip yep it really started in uh in Toronto when Matt Chapman the cameras caught him in the dugout saying why the F are we pitching to that guy he's the only effing guy on that team that can hit <laughs> <laughs> and from then on they decided to intentionally walk him quite a bit and then he goes to Atlanta and they intentionally walked him there and the the visiting crowd the home crowds are actually booing yeah. the team when they're intentionally walking Shohei so uh back to the point I got sidetracked a little bit Mike Trout needs to come back Yep, because you're not going to walk Shohei Otani, at least not as easily when there's Mike Trout looming on deck. So uh, a big, that's a big part of this angels team right now is Shohei's just not getting pitched to mm -mm. Trout's on the comeback trail. Is it days? Is it a couple weeks? Who knows, but he's getting closer. I really think the angels need him. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Because when you think about that too, you're getting intentionally walked. It's taken away from a lot of your stats. He's leading the league in home runs. You mentioned, I didn't even think about this till you brought this up a couple weeks ago. There's a possibility that he could be going for the triple crown this year. But if he's intentionally walked, that ain't going to happen. Oh, it's, it's closer than I think most people realize. And one thing I think, when, we, when we've talked Shohei in the past, he's never really been a high batting average yeah. guy, right? Like he's always, he's had the power. He's had the OPS uh, batting average is a bit of a, of an older step, but it's still one that we talk about quite frequently in baseball and his batting average has never just been very high, super high. You know, we're talking about around the 250. great season. He's hitting over 300 this year. So you go through, you start thinking, well, triple crown. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Home runs. He's leading the American league. Yep. That's why it's all in the American League, but he's also leading all of Major League Baseball in homers with 39. He's one away from 40. RBIs, 81, three off of the lead. So just one grand slam away from taking Done. the league there with RBIs. Batting average, 305. That's 16 points off of the American League lead, which 
isn't really that much. Who you know, the guy that's hitting quick math here, 321. One day going 0 for 4, a 4 for 4 day for Shohei. Oh, They're right back neck and neck in that. That can so happen within a week. It could happen in a couple of days, more more realistically, a week. But yes, it, Bo Bichette is the guy hitting 321. Oh. Who, well, he's out for a yeah. bit of time. So, who, you know, that brings in a whole other conversation. If he misses an extended period of time, he's not going to qualify for that anymore. So he'll move out of that. And then who's next up? So. Yandy Diaz is 318. So, you know, this is an interesting conversation that we should very much so have. Is Shohei Otani having the year he is on the mound? Absurd. At the plate, offensively, home run totals, OPS through the roof. We should have a serious talk about how close he is to the triple crown in the American League, which would be the yeah. first since Miguel Cabrera. Yeah. How cool would that be? It's like, what can't he do? Well, let me tell you. He could also go for the Triple Crown. He's in the Cy Young conversation. He's the MVP favorite. He's doing things we've never seen before in the history of the game. Let me just, yeah, he's just like, here, let me let me give you some more. You know, I, I've had this conversation internally with myself a lot over the last couple of weeks. You have a lot of internal conversations, Ben. My brain is a big old conversation. <laughs> it's a scary place in there. Um, I, you know... I've been very careful, and I, I've talked about this before in other in other episodes we do. Yeah. I'm very careful with the wording that I use with Shohei because you don't just throw out he is the greatest player of all time easily, right? But I, I, I have now inched closer to that mm -hmm. by saying he is the greatest player that we have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Now, this stretch he's on, if he does this for an extended period of time, there you have it. That's the conversation. The, 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 the most difficult conversation in any sport to have greatest of all time is baseball. Well, if he does this for much longer, he's going to solve that for everybody. And the answer is going to be Shohei Otani. But as of right now, greatest player the game of baseball has ever seen. And I don't believe it's particularly close. And an interesting conversation I had not with myself this time with somebody online is I, I called him that recently. And somebody said, well, he's neither the greatest pitcher to ever live or the greatest hitter to ever live. So how can you call him the greatest player ever or the, yeah, the greatest player we've ever seen. And an interesting argument that I've come up for this. Let me, let me toss it to you. And, yeah. And see I, if, I'm like see writing if you're on board out greatest player we've ever seen. And I'm seeing if it has anything like cool sounding like, go, see if but you're on board with this okay. analogy. Okay. Ready? Would you rather yeah. one payment of a hundred dollars or two payments of $75. Two payments of $75? Well, the 100's bigger and better, right? No, it's more money. Exactly. And that's why Shohei might not be the greatest pitcher of all time. He might, might not be the greatest hitter of all time, but you combine what he's doing and you have the greatest player of all time. I don't even know what I'm doing with my hand, <laughs> but he's the greatest player we've ever seen. You're landing the eagle. <laughs> I'm you're here. Doing. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> he's the GP West greatest player we've ever seen. We've ever. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's a, that's an acronym for you. Yeah. Jipuas. Okay, that does it. Trying. That does it for my favorite segment <laughs> this week in Shohei Otani News. And that also does it, Alex, for this Wednesday special edition of This Week in Otani News because it was Wednesday. We had to wait till the trade deadline yep. ended to do this because what were the Angels going to do? Mm -hmm. What were we going to talk about with Shohei and the Angels and where they're positioned and how they're set up? So we waited. And I'm glad we waited because, oh boy, a lot yeah. happened yesterday. That was exciting. This was a fun one. Thank you all for listening to this Wednesday episode of This Week in Shohei Otani News. Make sure you're subscribed to Flippin' Bats wherever you listen to your podcast. We are also on all social media, including YouTube, where you can watch every single thing we do at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. Thank you all for listening to this episode. If you want to hear all about the trade deadline, Alex and I did a live trade deadline special episode yesterday. That is the most recent episode available on your podcast app. But until tomorrow, my friends, this is another episode of Flippin' Bats. Peace.